All right, let's move on to a game that has a total almost double that of Wisconsin and Iowa. We are in the Big 12 now, 7 p.m. kickoff on ESPN on Saturday. TCU at Texas. Texas, a seven-point home favorite in this one, over-under of 65. We talked about this a little bit earlier with TCU's playoff chances, Brett, but if they want to make the playoff, this is the big upset they're going to have to pull. Yes, uh, the aggregate power ratings like Texas by five and a half, five point seven points, uh, which is less than that seven. And again, seven's a key betting figure, so that's important. We've seen what Texas can play like against their big opponents. We've seen them step up to the plate against Alabama, spe- specifically defensively. Uh, note Alabama did kind of beat themselves in that game with a ton of penalties, um, but then they also blew the doors off of Oklahoma. And I know Oklahoma's not that good a football team, and they were playing terrible football at the time. But that is one of the biggest rivalries in college football. So we see what Texas can come to the plate with. Now, after that Oklahoma game, I have to give a shout out to Shahan J. Raja, I believe it is. I'm I'm so sorry. I definitely botched the pronunciation of his name on Twitter. Quinn Ewers, since playing in the Red River shootout, less than 51% completion and 6.5 yards per attempt. He is not playing very well at the moment. I looking at the schedule he played against. It wasn't a typical, particularly scary schedule uh, played just horribly against Oklahoma state whose defense has regressed a lot. So I don't know if I'm looking at this Texas offense in the same light as I would in that Oklahoma game um, or even, you know, Alabama where Ewers showed flashes before getting hurt um, and not playing most of that an uh, in injury for TCU, Quentin Johnson, uh, Quentin Johnston. Sorry about that. Uh, prolific wide receiver. One of the best in the country projected first round draft pick right now in the latest mocks. He returned to practice, but it is worth noting that he missed most of last week with an ankle injury and ankle sprain. So even if he comes back, he may not be playing at hundred percent. And that's important because he's the one that just shreds defenses deep. Uh, just an incredible downfield threat. Uh, TCU, we don't talk about their defense a whole lot, uh, at least not in a good light, but they do have Travias Hodges Tomlinson, who's a very good corner. Um, he can match up pretty well with the Xavier Worthies, the Jordan Whittingtons, but the problem is, is they only have one Hodges Tomlinson. They don't have two, but they need two to defend both Xavier Worthy and Jordan Whittington. Now, the bind is once you do get on those guys, you have to deal with Bijan Robinson, who ran for over 200 yards on TCU last year, albeit a significantly worse run defense. But I'm still not really inspired by their by, by their defensive front. I, I'm just not. So I think Bijan Robinson is going to find some success here, uh, even if Quinn Ewers isn't playing all that well. They can kind of rely on him. It's just a fun note. I wouldn't use it as a betting trend whatsoever, but TCU is seven and one uh, when they play in a game featured by college game day, which is the best in the FBS. Just an interesting note. Again, don't take that with you, Um, but TCU, they have something to play for. We mentioned it. This is the biggest game of their season. If they want to remain in the college football playoff conversation, if they want to win a big 12 title, which would be an incredible turnaround from last year, if they want to finish undefeated, which is in the cards now, they have to win this game. And I don't think Texas is a team that steps up to the plate to spoil the other team's party. They play when they have a big blockbuster team in town. And TCU is a top four team. And these teams have played forever. It's a big rivalry. But I don't believe that TCU coming to town carries the same weight as Alabama or when they play Oklahoma. It's just a matter of the brand. And and Texas does focus on that as much as they will tell you that they don't. They do care about the helmets on the other sideline. Um, So I'm going to take TCU plus seven. I haven't seen a lot of movement around this, uh, which kind of sucks, but you can find TCU seven anywhere. Again, they have something to play for. And even if they don't win this game outright, I don't think that they're going to lose by more than a touchdown. And I'll I'll just echo that. If if you think they're a live dog in this one and – this is the the toughest game left on the regular season schedule, then I would suggest betting the money line here plus 225 is the best available as we record on Wednesday morning and roll that over each game. And you're going to get better than seven to one on them to make the college football playoff. So um, if we look at the big 12 standings here, Brett, who's their most likely opponent? If they win this game, who's their most likely opponent in the big 12 title game here? Do you think? Uh, it's, it's so hard because it's just fallen off a cliff lately because 
it was Kansas State, but Adrian Martinez has been in and out of the lineup, and you know they've lost a couple of games. Uh, here's Texas, but like, am I going to sit here and tell you that Texas is is going to play in the Big Twelve title game? No, Oklahoma State's fallen off since Spencer Sanders got hurt. Yeah, that's what's interesting because if TCU <laughs> does win out, that means by definition they're going to hand Texas a third conference loss. They're going to hand Baylor a third conference yes. loss. So, yep. I guess we're looking at Kansas State potentially in or the drop Big the state and say game. Kansas. Do What's we drop that? the state and do we drop the state and say Kansas? I hope so. It's not oh, going to be. Oh man, I hope so. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, the Kansas Jayhawks in a Big Twelve title game? Exactly. That, what the that Big would 12 be incredible. Was for when they instituted a Big Twelve title game. Well, they they are undefeated when Jalen Daniels plays, um, but they they have a route. I'm not going to say that they're going to win, but they have a route because they play both Texas and Kansas State. Who are the I, only I would, two teams above them? Baylor's going to play TCU. Yeah. Um, although you know what, Baylor has a tiebreaker over Kansas. That's important. So yeah. So I guess winner of this Baylor Kansas <laughs> State game this week is in the driver's seat to get to the Big Twelve title game. Yeah. Um, unless Texas wins this week, and then they, I think Texas. Then it'll probably be a Texas TCU rematch. Yeah, then we might be looking at a rematch here. So interesting, but like, but yeah. like I said earlier, with the, with the TCU route to the playoff, Baylor and Kansas State don't overly scare me with TCU, and we'll find out with TCU and Baylor here in two weeks, and we already found out with TCU and Kansas State. Yeah, Texas has the head to head over Kansas State. Their final game of the regular season is home against Baylor, so a lot of a lot of head to head tiebreakers here still in play. Yes, might might have a three way tiebreaker where no head to head solves it. So we'll have to figure out uh, what happens after that. Still a lot of games left to be played here, but obviously TCU has everything they want right in front of them in terms of both Big Twelve title hopes and also the college football playoff. 